In almost a decade and a half, he won 14 Grand Slam tournaments, a record at his retirement. He spent 286 weeks as world number one, and from 1993 to 1998, he finished the year as best in the world six times in a row. He destroyed his opponents with a precise and devastating serve, which earned him the nickname Pistol Pete. He ended his rich career in 2002 by winning the US Open final against his great rival, Andre Agassi. But how did it all start? How did his career develop? And what kind of tennis legend was he? Find out in the upcoming video and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Sampras has a very interesting background as his Jewish mother Georgia immigrated from Greece and his father also had Greek roots. His grandfather Kostas was also Greek. Pete started developing his love for tennis when he was only three years old and he could be regularly seen hitting the ball against a wall for several hours a day. Sampras devoted even more time to tennis the moment his family moved from Washington to sunny California. When he was a kid, his tennis role model was Rod Laver, whom he had the opportunity to meet as an 11-year-old and enjoy his favorite game with. During his teenage days, he was coached by Robert Lansdorp, and Sampras had almost an identical forehand to Lansdorp during his career. The shot did not contain much topspin, but the focus was on driving through the ball. In the following years, his career was looked after by Dr. Peter Fisher, who was most responsible for Sampras switching from a two-handed to a one-handed backhand, which would prove to be a key move in his subsequent dominance, most notably at Wimbledon. The mentioned change was allegedly made with the aim of Sampras becoming the champion in London. Sampras was recognized for his great serve, which many other players, fans, and tennis experts said was one of the best in the history of the sport. There was no difference between the first and second serve, and what was especially important, whenever he was in a critical situation, he found salvation in a great serve and won key points with aches even from the second serve. It was not easy for opponents to read his serve because he knew how to cover them up very well. Pete was generally an all-around player who cultivated sharp attacking tennis. He returned brilliantly from the baseline, putting the opponents in an uncomfortable situation. He nurtured serve and volley game and possessed a fantastic forehand with which he demolished opponents by hitting the ball very straight. This especially helped him achieve great success on grass and concrete, but he was not overly good on clay. His single hand backhand was not far behind his forehand in quality. As his career progressed, he was more and more offensive while playing a chip and charge strategy. Throughout his career, he used the Wilson Pro Staff original racket, the frame of which was manufactured in the Caribbean. He played with Babalot Natural Gut, and all his rackets were restrung before every match, and the rackets had extra weight to weigh in at 400 grams. At just 16, Pistol Pete was already in the top 100 in the world. He made his professional debut in 1988, and as a young boy, managed to make a breakthrough of almost 800 positions in the ATP list by defeating several players from the top 50, including, at that time, the eighth player in the world, Tim Mayotte. In the following year, he hints at the potential he possesses, as he defeated defending champion Mats Wellander at the US Open. That year, Sampras made his debut on the big stage, which would be a prelude to the many successes that would follow in the following years. At only 19 years old, he won his first major trophy, celebrating at the US Open in 1990. He successfully defeated Muster, Lindell, and McEnroe, and in the final, he defeated Andre Agassi, with whom he built a huge rivalry in the future. At the time of winning this tournament, Sampras was only 19 years and 28 days old, making him the youngest winner of the US Open ever. Within less than three years, Sampras became one of the best players in the world who was able to compete on an equal footing with the players who were at the top of the world at the time, even though he was still a boy. That speaks volumes for how good Sampras was. He endured the following years of criticism from his colleagues, especially from Courier and Connors when he failed to defend his title at the US Open. At the time, he stated that he was not overly disappointed that he had even felt lighter because he was relieved of the unnecessary pressure of having to defend his title. In 1992, he made his debut at the Olympic Games, but since the tournament was played on clay, a surface that is not really his favorite, he did not make a name for himself in that tournament as expected. He won the Davis Cup with US and again played in the US Open Final where he was defeated by Stefan Edberg. After that defeat, he set his sights on becoming the best player in the world and directed all his ambitions toward achieving that goal. The following year, Sampras achieved his great wish and became the world's number one player. He was once again the target of criticism because he reached that position after almost two and a half years without winning a single Grand Slam tournament, and then he silenced all critics. His dominance at his favorite tournament, Wimbledon, began. After defeating Courier in the final to clinch the first of his seven Wimbledon titles, he won the US Open for the second time and that year was marked by serving over 1,000 aces during that season. The following year, he managed to conquer Australia for the first time by winning against Todd Martin in the final. 
he celebrated again at Wimbledon when he beat another excellent server, Goran Ivanisevic. The final was unreal because only a few points saw more than five shots. He continued his dominance at Wimbledon the following year when he defeated Boris Becker. That year will be marked by one of the most emotional moments in his career. During the tournament in Australia, he learned that his longtime coach, Tim Gullickson, was seriously ill. During the match with Courier, Sampras could not hide his tears because of the whole situation. The crowd gave him huge support and somehow managed to win that match in the fifth set. In the final, however, he failed to overcome Agassi, who won after four sets. He took revenge on him for that defeat at the US Open. After the dominance he established on the London grass in 1996, a big sensation happened. Pete lost to Richard Krychek in the quarterfinals who went on to win the tournament. It would turn out to be Sampras's only defeat in eight years in Wimbledon. He redeemed himself with a new title at the US Open when he celebrated against the second player in the world at the time, Michael Chang. That year he achieved the best result ever at Roland Garros, where he was defeated in the semi-finals by Kafelnikov, who then went on to win the tournament. Sampras allowed his rivals to hope that they could match him on grass, but in the following four years, he showed that he was one of the best players on the surface ever along with Federer and Djokovic. In the period from 1997 to the end of his career in 2002, in addition to four Wimbledon titles, he managed to win one Australian Open and one US Open. As mentioned, he won the last title at Wimbledon against Rafter, with whom he did not have a very friendly relation. It all started in 1998 when, after a controversial referee decision, Rafter won the tournament in Cincinnati. At that moment, Sampras had 11 and Rafter just had one Grand Slam title. Pete was furious after the loss and didn't want to shake the referee's hand. In the same year, Rafter managed to defeat Sampras at the US Open, which he then won. Pete stated afterward that the cause of the loss was a leg injury he had and he was not overly happy about the fact that Rafter had won the tournament. Rafter then felt that Sampras had no respect for his rivals, who noted that Sampras would only consider him as a great player when he won another Grand Slam title, which he did. During his career and 16 matches, Rafter defeated Sampras only four times. At the moment when the media was focused on the relationship between the aforementioned players, Sampras' other great rival, Andre Agassi, was recovering from an injury. Against Agassi, he played as many as 34 matches and achieved 20 victories, the last of which came when he put an end to his rich career after two consecutive defeats in the finals of the US Open against Marat Safin and Leighton Hewitt. It was his last match in a career that ended with 64 titles won, and his dominance at Wimbledon will be especially remembered. At the tournament a year earlier, a new tennis legend was born, Roger Federer, who defeated Sampras in their only clash after Sampras had won 31 Wimbledon victories in the previous four years. Not long after, Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic entered the scene, who together Roger marked the last two decades of world tennis. The two did not get to compete with Sampras, unlike Roger. Sampras won all seven finals at Wimbledon, Djokovic won all nine finals in Australia, while Nadal won all 14 finals he played at the French Open. Pete did not like Clay, and certainly in terms of style of play, as well as in terms of the major titles he won, he is much closer to Djokovic than Federer, who caused him only one of the two defeats he experienced on the center court of Wimbledon. Along with Nadal, Sampras is one of the few players who managed to win a Grand Slam as a teenager in his 20s and 30s. In the end, he stopped at 14 titles, and only Nadal, Djokovic, and Federer were mentioned before him. He quite justifiably deserved the status of one of the best players of all time, as he at one time could not be removed from number one ranking for six years. If he was better on clay, he would probably have even more titles. What are your thoughts on Pistol Pete? How do you think he would fare on the field today against the aforementioned legends? Let us know in the comments section down below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Goodbye for now.